Good afternoon. I guess it's uh, first, I'd like to say it's an honor to be here. It's great to see everyone. It's not often you get a chance to go into a room full of architects, and uh, I go home and people say, well, what do you do? And I'm like, well, here's what I do. And they're like, oh, that was interesting. Can I get $5, Dad? I was glad to talk to you. Or I sit around work and you talk to other people, and there's very few architects around, so it's nice to be in a room full of architects. I'm Charles Chavez from U.S. Joint Forces Command, J892, Capabilities Engineering Branch. Wanted to talk today about how we are using joint mission threads and the DOTA <coughs> combined to achieve results for the Joint mission thread vision. We've been trying to accomplish joint mission threads now for about four years, and now we've achieved some pretty staggering breakthroughs. As a matter of fact, we were fortunate enough this last year that the U.S. Joint Forces Command Commander, General Mattis, placed joint mission threads on his priority list. He saw the ability of cross-portfolio integration on several issues, the joint analysis portion, and he came back to us and he said, hey, this is fine, but what about reusability? How are we going to be able to go ahead and make this happen? So we looked at him and we said, well, sir, we have a plan for a three-tier approach, and that's kind of what I want to go over with you here today. Who benefits? Well, as always, there's going to be a lot of people who we were trying to help out. When we started, we thought, well, we're going to help the acquisition community. That was our first thought because that was basically we were looking across what we call the dot mill PF, and we were looking at the materiel solution. Well, as we look, like there's a lot more people who can use this, like the testing community. They're able to use it in different areas, like the National Training Center, the training community. We got with a group called Joint Personnel Recovery, and they were able to use some of our architectures to go ahead and help groups going into theater with their uh, personnel recovery training. Also, there's the modeling and simulation community. Other architects have been able to leverage our architectures uh, across different domains. We were asked by a group called NECC if we could help them out and several other groups, uh, Northcom and some of the other and embassies that asked for our architecture for assistance. So we were able to give them what we had. And it kind of opened up our eyes and hey, this is bigger than just our ability to affect acquisitions. Maybe we need to branch it out a little more and start thinking deeper and make it a reusable process. But most of all, an improved capability of warfighter. And that was first and foremost our major goal. <clears throat> now, you can, I can sit here and I can tell you, well, this is great, but it's better if I can give you an example. And what we're trying to do and down the road, our hope and, our, and the goal and where it looks like we're going and Everything seems lined up and ready to go. Imagine if, for those of you who were military before, you're a naval watch officer, you're sitting on watch, and you find out you're going to receive a heavy brigade combat team tomorrow for support up to support your operation. Well, what do I do? What am I going to use these guys for? Do I need to bring the staff together? Do we have to war game this mission? Down the road, the hook is this. That watch officer will be able, will be able to take the icon, drag it, place it across the board, place that group in theater, Show the capability gaps, find out what the shortfalls are, identify issues, and run capability mitigation report and include that in this warning. That is all from a series of joint mission threads that have been gathered. We're attempting to federate and expose data across all domains to every user, a web-based service. How do we make this vision a reality? Well, joint mission threads. We started out with all of our joint mission threads. They're your general base, uniform joint task list. And that's a list of tasks for, that describe what is required to, by each group to perform that activity. Inside that joint task list, we went down through and we found other supporting tasks. We applied those support, supporting tasks. We also realized, well, there's a key portion here, critical elements. Those critical elements inside that you general almost laid themselves out and overlaid to be activities. So we took those and we said, hey, we can really also assist the digital community. What if we take these critical elements, go to a group of SMEs and say, here you go, what's missing in these steps? Ultimately, between publication and reality, there are always some missing steps. So they came to us and they said, well, if you, if you include this or this, add step two, sub step two, three, and four, this activity will be correct. We were able to take those back in the case of joint close air support, go back and modify the critical elements to the utilities. So that was a big help to the warfighter. Also, authoritative doctrine. You can put anything down on paper, but if you can't back it up with an authoritative source or show where it maps to, it really has no use. 
So that was key for us also. TTPs, procedures, service documentation also. We got to the point where we said, okay, this is all fine. We've got the activities, but it's an activity. How long does it have? What are the measures? What are the metrics that go along with that activity? So those are some key areas that we wanted to go ahead and face. We were able to take the testing data and apply that. Like all, like all joint mission threads, we start with the activities. Well, after the activities, we knew we had to find out well, what nodes were involved. So we went to, back to the SMEs and we said, okay, let's find out what nodes we have and what roles or actors are also playing in this. We had to find out what information was passed. We went through, found the information, lead lines for drill close air support in this case, that were passed. We wanted to find out what information was passed back and forth at what time and what sequence. So we were able to apply that. We were able to take some of the timing information and place metrics against it to find out how fast or what areas of improvement we could also apply. Joint mission threads, I've talked a lot about it, but not really going too far in depth. Like I said earlier, we have a three-tier approach. Tier one, we see it as the breadth of a mission. That's the area where all things remain joint from plan, prepare, execute, adapt. We keep that at a level where across all services and co-coms, everything is at the same level, all, all activities are the same for each group. When we get down into what we call tier two, or a strand, in our, we like the phrase as a strand. That's a scenario-based activity because across a high level, I can give you anything, and everybody always says the famous words, it depends. Well, if it depends, that's where we get down in the strands, and those strands cover that it depends moment. So as we go through, we run different scenarios across those strands. One tier one, tier one can produce 100 tier two strands because there are 100, it depends. Once we leave tier two, what we've done is we've gone into tier three, and this is our coordinated implementation. In the case of CAS, once there was only, we were only utilizing in theater, voice close air support. We went through, we looked, and we started going down through, like everybody has the capability of digital close air support, why isn't it utilized? Well, we brought the services and co-coms together and said, hey, we're not here to tell you how to do it, we just like to suggest or be a part of this grouping and say, let's see if we can all come together as a family and, and implement digital close air support. Proud to say today, digital close air support's well on its way. Um, there's a, it's going through an engineering change proposal three right now, I believe, and by 2015, all aircraft should be implemented with it, and those capabilities should be seen in the field. We're also now starting with joint personnel recovery, all because of this joint mission threat concept. Uh, all the services and co-coms come together along with the joint personnel recovery agency, and they've said, hey, we can see the value of this. These architectures, we thought they were just pictures, but you're able to show us how the mappings work. And we kind of laughed and said, yeah, they're not just pictures. Behind there, there's a series of data, and that's really, really what it's all about. It's about the data. Speaking of the, uh, Kosh mentioned earlier, we don't just want to do architecture for the sake of doing architecture. What we've done is chosen a select set of architectures across a higher level tier one that we feel we can pass on and anyone can pull that book off a shelf and have a head start going into their strand philosophy. So if I'm doing joint close air support and I want to get a head start, I can pull that higher level with the OV1, OV2, and OV5. I've got the activities, I know what nodes, and with the SV1, I know what system. I'm able to pull that, now go ahead and start my strands. And with my strands, now I'm going to figure out my messaging order, distributions, timing, because we're also going to put an executable architecture in there in our strand philosophy. So with that strand, we're going to make sure that we don't have any gaps or we don't have any lockups at cue points, our criteria is correct, and our logic is correct. 